Projected number one pick Victor Wimbenyama has two monster preseason performances. And in this episode, I will give you my top eight prospects on my big board. I haven't got to 10 yet, but I will give you my top eight prospects. Find out who made my top eight so far. We are still about 50 days away from the start of college basketball, so I'm still working on my big board. But find out who has made my top eight. Stay tuned. All right, shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I am your host, Rafael Barlow, a.k.a. the one-stop shop for NBA Draft content. I am the founder of NBA Draft Junkies and the director of scouting at NBA Big Board. I scout, I write, I create video content on YouTube. I eat, sleep, breathe, and basically just live this whole NBA draft life. And then here's a, a personal shout out. Thank you. Big, big thank you to everybody that has subscribed to the NBA Big Board newsletter. I'm kind of amazed in a sense that there's so many people that are paying for, for my content. And if you're not subscribed to it, check it out. I mean, it's, exclu- it's exclusive content. I interview different NBA front office executives and scouts and it's a little bit similar to what Chad Ford did. I took over for Chad back in April, and I'm kind of I've kind of added my own personal twist to it on top of still providing you with content for and intel from from different scouts around the league. So check it out nbabigboard.com. So with your subscription, you're basically supporting me and you're supporting an independent scout that's out trying to compete with the with the big dogs and and the money that I've been able to generate from the subscriptions, I'm using it to basically go back into to scouting. I just booked a a trip to Paris. I'm going to watch uh, Victor Wimbayama's first two home games of the season. And then from Paris, I'll be going to Vegas where I'll be watching the Scoot versus Wimbayama showcase that's uh, taking place. That's going to be like the biggest event probably of of the entire basketball season. We have the two, we have two of the top projected picks going head to head, even though it is an exhibition game, but it'd be a lot of scouts first opportunity to see Wimbayama live and in color. And it'd be his first showcase in the United States. Speaking of Wimbayama, he had two monster, monster, preseason performances, one against Daru Safaka team in Turkey and the other um, a team in from Israel that actually won the Israeli league. And he had 34 points in both games. And, you know, the score of 34 points in Europe is, is a big deal. I mean, the, the pace of the game is slower. The game is not as long. I mean, it's a league where, I mean, not just – one particular league, but just overall, you don't really see guys average 20 points per game. So scoring 34, even though it is like a preseason game and a friendly game, is, is pretty impressive. But it was the fashion and how he got his 34 points. Now, again, we're talking about a guy that people have said is the best prospect since LeBron James, the best prospect since Anthony Davis. I mean, he is a guy that has been showered with accolades and expectations since he kind of burst upon the scene as a 16-year-old. For some, I mean, he's been on the scene a little bit before that. But for the past three years or two years, people have said, all right, this guy is going to be the number one pick in 2023. So that comes with expectations, right? But what he did last week has blown away even like the biggest Wimbayama supporters, he's seven four. I mean, seven four barefoot, right? I, you know, I'm one of these guys that I understand when you measure guys barefoot, it's accurate, but you 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 play your shoes. So he's seven five, and I mean, he displayed a advanced level of shot making, not just getting the ball in the post and using his size. I'm talking. Shot making off the dribble, step backs, pull up jumpers. He had this one play where he like came off the screen and was fading to the right effortlessly, knocked down a three. There was another play, it was like 
at the end of the shot clock. He got the ball in the mid post, hit the defender with like this double Hakeem Olajuwon shimmy shake fadeaway. Again, he is seven five. He's shown ball handling, and it's almost like he is a different player than the guy that everyone was talking about. How great he is! He's playing with a newfound confidence. He's playing with a new level of freedom that we did not get a chance to see last year. And it looks like he is going to make the jump. Like, for example, I lived in Turkey during the 2016-17 season. And I remember seeing Luka Doncic play. And he played a, you know, he played a a decent role for Real Madrid. He was behind um, the guy that won the MVP that year, the EuroLeague. And I knew at that point this kid is going to be really good. He's going to be the number one pick, at least in my opinion, the number one pick in the draft. But then after that season ended, he went to Eurobasket and had like a crazy performance. I was actually there at Eurobasket. And then he made like this humongous jump from good EuroLeague role player but superstar or high potential NBA draft pick to like EuroLeague superstar where he ended up winning MVP in the EuroLeague and then he ended up, I mean, the rest is history. I didn't think Wimbenyama can make that big of a jump. I mean, I think Luka is a one-of-one. One. But based off these two preseason games, and okay, I could be getting way, way ahead of myself, but it looks like Wimbenyama could make a similar jump, which is saying a lot. Not saying that he's going to win MVP of the, the EuroLeague. He could possibly win MVP of the French League. But, I mean, the jump that he has made in these two friendlies has been incredible. Like I said, we are looking at a totally, totally different looking prospect. The ball handling, the shot making, the, the ability to pull up. I mean, he's 7'5", so you're not blocking his shot on a pull up. But, I mean, the fluidity, the handles. And I've even seen some people say that he looks like a 7'5", Kevin Durant. Now, that's a huge stretch, but... He looks more like a 7'5 natural wing. And I know, like, there's some comparison to Chet. Chet definitely has some wing skills, but Wimbayama seems just a little bit more fluid than Chet. While, I mean, he's he shown point guard skills. I saw a play where he was bringing the ball down court. So it almost makes me want to say, like, he's had this talent and these skills all along, but for whatever reasons, he has not necessarily been able to showcase them. Maybe they put him in somewhat of a box as, as a big. And I think that part of the reason why he has made the switch from Asvel to the Metropolitans is because he's going to have a lot more freedom or basically a lot more freedom to advertise all of his skill sets. I think it's a situation where um, his agent represents the coach of that team and represents a few other players on the team, and they are going to put Victor in the best position to succeed while also kind of limiting his minutes, in a sense, making sure that he's, again, just put in the best the best position to succeed. So, I mean, if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube, type in Victor Wimbayama, type in 34 points. You'll see highlights from the game, and you're going to be absolutely blown away because we've never seen – anybody at 7-5 do what what he's done or what what he's doing and I haven't even talked about the defense like defensively he's still I mean way ahead of everyone else on the floor I mean he's a guy that I mean he's protecting the paint he's defending the space he's getting steals he's literally changing the opposing team's offense when he's on the floor so again check it out Go to the go to YouTube, type in Victor Wimbayama 34 points, and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Again, I was so excited. I bought I bought the ticket. I bought my ticket yesterday. As soon as I saw the highlights, I bought my ticket. So you know what? I have to be there. Even though I was planning on being there at some point, but I just said, you know, I got I gotta be there <laughs> early. So looking forward to that. All right, I want to talk to you about Built Bar, but after I talked to you about Built Bar. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of my big board. Again, I'm not done with it. It's one of those things where I do a big board and then I scratch a guy's name off, move somebody down, move somebody up. But right now, I am confident in my top eight. 
let's talk about Bilt Bar. Because if you have not tried the Bilt Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There is a new flavor, and it is the delicious, indulgent cookie dough, which is covered in chocolate. That's right. It is a cookie dough covered in chocolate. Built has done it again. And let me introduce you to the cookie dough chunk puffs that have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, covered with 100% real chocolate. So it's like you get all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, and it's healthy for you. The cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. So go to built.com. You can snag your box for you or for the family. It will be the perfect treat. Or you can find a really good hiding place just to hoard them for yourselves because if you live with people, you may not want to share. They're that good. And like all built Bars, like I said, they are covered with 100% chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. And they have this light, fluffy texture. It's so good. And what's great about the built Bars is that they are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently. And it provides a ton of health benefits. So eat something that tastes good and more importantly, is good for you. Or is it the other way around? Right. But I guarantee you, you'll love the cookie dough chunk puff whenever you need a snack for a workout. You just need something around the house to snack on. It's a perfect protein bar that tastes better than your typical candy bar. So you can ditch the calories and the fat and the sugar and grab yourself a built bar. And if you go to built.com and if you use the promo code locked on 15, you will get 15% off your next order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 or LOCKED ON15 at built.com. All right, once again, shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. All right, now let's get into it. I mean, it's, it's still early. It is September 19th. We have about... 50 days, give or take, until the beginning of college basketball. And I've been doing a lot, a lot of work. I have two projects that I'm excited about, and I'll mention them at a later date. But I think these are going to be two very, very big projects for me personally. And it's, um, I'll be completing a, a goal that I set for myself. And so I've been doing a lot of work. I just put it like that. I've been doing a lot of work, a lot of late nights. For example, it is 7.49 a.m. and I went to bed at 3 a.m. and I have a newborn. So that means I woke up a little bit between then. And I've been watching film just hours and hours and hours of film on the 2023 class. And one of the things that I've struggled with is trying to, trying to like, come up with a top 15 or, or, or a big board list. There's so much talent. And then, you know, every year is different. You know, I, I'm trying to be as accurate as possible, which is, you know, literally impossible to predict. But for example, if you look at, you know, the top 10 projections at this time last year was totally wrong. I mean, from Yannick Sosa to Caleb Houston to Jaden Hardy, those are the guys that a lot of people thought were going to be top 10 or at least lottery picks. And, those guys were second round picks. Peyton Watson, for example, um, Patrick Baldwin Jr. So I'm trying to, I mean, basically do the unavoidable <laughs> and and trying to predict guys that I think are going to be successful by saying, all right, worst case scenario, if this guy doesn't do this or if this guy is not in this particular situation, is it going to hurt his draft stock? So I've been kind of racking my brain doing it, but I'm down to eight prospects. I shouldn't say down to eight prospects. I have eight prospects that I'm very comfortable with in my big board. First is Victor Wimbayama, who I just spent the whole segment talking about. Secured at number two is Scoot Henderson. Scoot is your elite point guard that fits the modern NBA. I've said that he's a combination of Derrick Rose and Steve Francis built like a tank, 17 years old. Last year, last year, that's how old he was, 17 years old, averaged 14 points against grown men, just has a different pace to his game that I think is going to be very successful in the NBA. My, my favorite attribute about Scoot is that he has these ridiculously large hands that makes him, that, that makes him 
difficult to stop around the rim because he can pretty much really have control over the ball. And, um, you know, if you look at, like, Michael Jordan highlights, how how big his hands were, how he was able to off the dribble, palm the ball off the dribble and just kind of move the ball around and made it difficult for, for defenders to block his shot at the rim. Scoot has shown some passing instincts. I mean, I, I think that if you break the draft down in tiers, you can go Wimbayama one and Scoot in the same tier unless you have Wimbayama in an elite tier by himself and then Scoot in like tier 1B. But I'm, I'm very, very confident in those two. And then at number three, three and four, I just group them together. I am going with the Thompson Twins from Overtime Elite. Now, I'm a swing for the fences guy. I'm a guy that believes in, you know, if you're going to select a player in the top five of the lottery, you don't necessarily necessarily need to play it safe. Swing for the guy that if he hits is going to be an all-star or is going to be a franchise-changing talent. And I think the Thompson twins, a man and a sore Thompson, can be franchise changing talent. And I would select them three and four. A man is the 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 higher ranked of the two, in my opinion. Both guys are about six seven, one ninety, freakish athletes, very very athletic, effortless athletes, and they both have similarities. But a man is, I think, or a man. <laughs> I don't want to call him a man like I'm at church. He is a a high level passer. I mean, some of the reads that he makes. I mean, live dribble passer sees the the corner man driving kick makes dump offs. Just an advanced level playmaker. And his brother Asur, I think is. I mean, he, I don't think he's on the same level, but he is also a very good passer and playmaker. So I think you know, Amen is going to be like your. You know, your point guard in a sense, I think he can be your lead ball handler. And I think his twin Asur could be a point forward or a secondary ball handler. Both are creative off the dribble. Both can get to their spots due to their quickness and, and ball handling. Now, the, the biggest concern is the jump shot. The jump shot is a work in progress. It needs a lot of work. But I, the form isn't broken. I just think it's a matter of reps. You know, with, with most guys that are that athletic and that skilled on the high school or prep levels you can get to the rim anytime you want to you can bully your opponents especially when you're six seven 190 and, and again with their athleticism they've been able to get by without having to have a reliable jump shot so i think it's going to take some time but if they put in the work then I think that if they can become respectable jump shooters, then it opens the floor up. But I'm, I'm swinging for the fences. I'm taking the Thompson Twins three and four on my mock. As of today, again, it's September 19th. Like I said, defensively, athletically, they are on another level. And then defensively, I think at the very minimum, you're going to have guys that can defend multiple positions that give you offense and defense and passing and even if they don't develop the jump shot, I still think that they have the talent to be very, very impactful players in, in the NBA. So I'm gambling. Three and four, the Thompson Twins. All right, at number five, I'm going with Keontae George. Now, Keontae is someone that I've been following for years since his freshman year of, of high school in Louisville, Texas. I've been high on Keontae, and I definitely think he's a top five pick, top five talent for sure. He is... An incredible shot maker has a picturesque, very pretty jump shot that looks like it it's gonna go in every time he shoots it. He is a good athlete. I've seen some scouting reports that question his athleticism. I think he's a, a good athlete. I think that because his game isn't based off of athleticism, that people question his athleticism to to a certain extent. But he's a good athlete, shot maker. Now, the thing about Keontae that is a little bit concerning is he's going to Baylor. Not necessarily a knock on Baylor. But Baylor is returning their top two scores from last year. And they happen to play in the backcourt. So there is a chance that he ends up being in a crowded backcourt. Somebody's going to possibly be the odd man out. I mean, 
there is ways to to kind of make it work with it with a three guard lineup in college basketball so that could be somewhat of a concern that could bump him out but i think as far as talent wise I mean, he has the potential to be a four level score he can get to the rim he's a very good pull-up shooter he can knock down threes he can come off pin downs he can create his own shot and then he has the range and the ability to shoot threes off the dribble and so having a, a guard that can generate his own three-point shot is such a, a a valued asset in today's nba so i think he has the potential to be a four level score which is kind of like a new term and then he, he's a good passer like he has the vision like he can make some impressive reads i think once he figures out the balance between playmaking and setting his teammates up then he's going to be really really good he could potentially be like a dame lillard type player and i mean i've seen people compare him to bradley bill i just think keontae george is going to be very very good and i have him as a top five pick on my big board all right when we return i'll finish out the last three picks in my top eight i have not settled on the top 10 i finished out six seven and eight and then i give you a couple guys that are competing for the last two spots in my top 10 stay tuned once again you're listening to the locked on nba big board podcast this is rafael barlow and i'm giving you my top eight prospects so far on my big board i still have plenty of time i still have like i said about 50 days or so until college basketball I'll definitely have a full big board and mock draft out not necessarily a mock draft because i mean i'm 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 not going to do a mock draft based off predicting the records of of teams and i mean i know there are teams that that i believe will be um in the lottery but i'm not going to do necessarily a mock draft i'll do a big board but our number six and this is probably going to be a surprise to some but i'm going with gg jackson gg jackson signed with north carolina decided to back out of his well i don't think he signed i think he verbally committed to north carolina decided to reclassify and enter the high school class of 2022 which makes him eligible for the 2023 draft he will be playing for south carolina so he chose to to go with the with the neighbors it's crazy that they're not a a big rivalry simply because they're playing in different conferences even though they're like right next to each other but chose to go to south carolina where I, I mean i can imagine he'll have a much much bigger role at south carolina as opposed to at north carolina where he'd be sharing the ball with i mean a, a loaded team coming back from caleb love to armando baycott to rj davis so south carolina gives him a, a better opportunity to have the green light and he's going to be young for his class i mean he's only eight he'll only be 18 on draft day and i like what Gigi jackson brings to the table he's six nine i think the last weight i saw on him listed was about 210 he is the you know he's your modern day skilled four he is a, an advanced ball handler for four man he has the shake and bake that i like he'll be able to beat defenders off the dribble get to the basket then he's a good shooter and so i think that he has the the upside and promise to be a a weapon from behind the three-point line so i see him as like this best case scenario i see him as like this matchup nightmare that is a face-up four that you know penetrates and, and beats guys off the dribble he can post up a little bit still a, a work in progress but he can just exploit mismatches with his ability to handle the ball create his own shot a good pull-up shooter and he can be a pick and pop guy so i like i said i see him as a matchup nightmare to where you can use him as your face up four you can use him as your pick and pop four and then with his advanced ability to handle the ball put the ball on the floor and get to the basket he can attack close out so i'm high on gg jackson he's also a really really good rebound at least that's what he's been able to showcase on, on the prep levels and again he's he's 18 years old he's going to be one of the youngest players on on the board on draft day and the sky is the limit i don't even know who to compare him to to be honest with you he's he's tough to compare but gg jackson coming in at number six 
Then at number seven, I have Cam Whitmore. And Cam is a guy that I've seen quite a few people have at, at number three on, on their on their big board. And it wouldn't shock me if he ends up going number three in the draft. He's like this powerfully built combo forward. I think his size and athleticism and strength allows him to be able to defend threes and fours. He's kind of like your, your modern day forward. I mean, whether it's, I mean, it's, and this is a name that is, uh, I don't even like saying the name, but there are some similarities to Miles Bridges in a sense. I think he's a little bit more advanced than Miles at the same age. And I had, and I watched Miles play when he was in, when he was in high school, but Cam is, I think a little bit better at creating his own shot. Uh, Miles was a, you know, he was, I thought, a streaky shooter at, you know, his freshman year at, at Michigan State and even like his last year of high school. Then he ended up developing into a, a pretty good shooter. But I think with Cam Whitmore, you're talking about this this guy that has like this ridiculous motor. He, he's going to rebound the ball. He's going to get your hustle, your effort plays. I think he's going to be a consistent shooter. I mean, he's shown flashes of it. If he plays like he played at the at the under 18s this summer then then I mean, he's he's definitely a, a candidate to go top 3. Um I'm not necessarily believing that he'll shoot that well throughout the season, but I do buy that the jump shot is legit that he will be at least a 35-36% shooter from 3. He shows some flashes of being able to put the ball in for create his own offense. He's still a little wild. He's still a guy that that um, has a tendency to play out of control, um, which, you know, is very common for really athletic guys that are used to getting to the rim. But I'm, you know, I'm high on Cam Whitmore. I definitely think that he has a chance to go anywhere from seven through three or three through seven. I'm probably a little bit lower on him than than others. But he's, he's someone that I'm, that I'm very – interested in seeing what what happens with him this season because Villanova is not a school that is known for producing one and dones and he's projected to be a one and done lottery pick and and so I wonder how much of how, how much things are going to how much of Villanova's history will play a role in his his role I mean Villanova is a school that has produced plenty of NBA talent over the last few years but it's been guys that they've slowly developed over a two to three year period and, and cam is not a guy that i expect to be at villanova for two years three years but things have changed i mean jay wright is gone so um, i'm curious to see how that works out all right and last at number eight jerris walker who will be going to university of houston walker is someone that i think i'm a little bit higher on than most I I like what he brings to the table. I mean, he's physically gifted. He's 6'8". I want to say he's like 220. He just does a little bit of everything, fills up the stat sheet. He rebounds, he defends, he hustles. And when I watched his film, and I was watching his film late last night, and I'm, I'm going on like a second round of film watching with him, and he's a really good passer. He is a guy that can be like your connective tissue as a guy that you can give the ball to in the middle of the floor. He can make a play for others. He finds cutters. He can rebound and throw outlet passes and, and, and hit guys in stride. The jump shot is a little funky. It's, 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 it's a little slow. Uh, I think that it needs a, a little bit of work, but I think that can easily be fixed. But again, he has good positional size. I think he should be able to play and defend both forward spots because he has broad shoulders. Has a really good pace to his game. I like how he bullies smaller opponents. Like if you try to match him up with a with the wing, he's going to take him to the block or just kind of run through him. Um, transition finisher. Very good athlete. Kind of like a sneaky athlete. Like he he has. I don't know. Maybe kind of reminds me a little bit of Patrick Williams in a sense where he's. He's not like a guy that, like, when you see him, you just think like, oh, like, I mean, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of bad to compare anybody to the Thompson twins, but he doesn't necessarily rely heavily on all of his athleticism, but he makes these plays where you're just like, 
wow, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Uh, another thing I like about him, he has a soft touch around the rim. And sometimes, he, when I say he plays at his own pace, sometimes it's it's more so of being deceptive. Sometimes he looks like he's playing slow, and then he'll make a quick move here and there. Um, again, I like Jairus Walker, but it's the passing for me that has secured him in my top eight. And ahead of guys that a lot of people have in their top five. And so for my last two spots, I mean, the guys that are kind of in that in that range to go eight, I'm sorry, to go nine and ten, um, you have to mention Nick Smith. Nick Smith is a, a combo guard. Some say he might be a point. That's at Arkansas. You got Khalil Ware going to Oregon, who could possibly be a top five pick. There's Derek Lively. There's Derek Whitehead, Casey Wallace. There's quite a few guys. Terquavian Smith, who I'm really, really high on. Terquavian is going to be in my lottery. That, that that much I can assure you. Terquavian is going to be in my lottery. Then there's Dylan Mitchell. So I'm still torn about who to give these last two spots to in my top 10. But I'll discuss that on a later date. Well, shout out to each and everybody that has, again, made this Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. Now, for your second listen, go back and check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022. It's an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus the betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one Ultimate NFL Preview. Search for the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Once again, this is Rafael Barlow. Director of Scouting for NBA Big Board, founder of NBA Draft Junkies. And I am out.